Hello chess friends and welcome to the Zara of Chess channel and welcome back to the TCEC Cup Finals in 2021. We have reached now the second round of this super event. We have reached now the round in which only 16 engines are left in the event. Uh, 16 engines of course got kicked out in the first round of this super super prestigious tournament. So we're following now a great game played by Lila C0 against another engine defense uh, from the second round in which uh, we have to say the Lila C0 destroyed really this other engine defense. Uh, I'm sorry if i'm revealing you a little bit the result but that's not the point of this video the point is uh for you to watch how lila c0 really destroyed the greenfield defense which is really wild the greenfield is such a popular opening in top grandmaster level but here lila c0 played an immortal and beautiful attack and i've decided uh, to show more lila c0 games than stockfish games because it seems to me at least in the beginning of this uh, super event that lila c0 could finally make it because recently it was a pure domination by the stockfish engine maybe uh, lila c0 can finally also win a very prestigious tournament like the tcec cup final so let's check out now the game be prepared this is really beautiful chess as usual in the stop engine games this is very uh, pure domination here by lila c0 against this very very popular as i said greenfield defense so here lila c0 opened with the move d4 we have knight to f6 c4 g6 knight to c3 and here after bishop to g7 knight to f3 the last prearranged move by the organizer was the of d5 and i'm pointing out again i like more this cup final events because in the cup finals events we see natural openings um this uh, pre-arranged line uh, again i'm pointing out it's not so bad for white and for black so it's still uh here the position is playable for both sides so many times in this top events uh, as i mentioned also before we see sometimes any um, an engine gets a pure uh, domination in an early stage of the game gets a clear idea gets i think um, too too much uh, better position uh, than the other engine so that's why i like more this cup finals in which uh, the games are more equally and then of course who is better will simply win the game so here after move d5 we have c takes d5 the exchange variation we have knight to d5 we have e4 and here after move knight to c3 we have b takes c3 so this is now the common uh, greenfield defense setup uh, this is a position that has been played millions and millions of times in chess history so b takes c3 means now uh, most of the times that white cannot castle on the queen side because uh, the pawn structure is already weakened so a potential flank attack with to h4 h5 like usually we love to play of course flank attacks against the uh, fianchetto setups like this but so far it is not possible because uh, you have to make a decision where to castle so castle queen side is not a possibility you would love of course as i said to do that maybe and then maybe h4 h5 but uh, because of this weakened pawn structure so far it's not possible and that's actually the beauty of this game because here Lila C0 will play kingside castling and still will launch a flank attack against this black uh, setup, against this black Sfianchetto setup uh, here on the kingside. So that's why I decided to show this game because it breaks a little bit also the basic principles in chess. So it's really an amazing, amazing game here by uh, the top engine Lila C0. So after we beat C3, we have now castling uh, by um by the fences we have now bishop to e2 preparing of course also castle on the king side we have now c5 and now casting we have now b6 uh if you decide maybe here to play uh c takes d4 it's not such a huge problem here for white because c takes d4 and white is continuing the game then with a very powerful central control with this dominant position with the pawns in the center of the board and still maybe black could battle uh here with the move bishop to g4 uh try to battle somehow maybe before the d4 score but actually with bishop to e3 white solves all of the positional problems and okay in the continuation of the game maybe black could make something out of this two versus one situation on the queen side that would be the actual goal of this particular position to maybe launch here uh, sort of an attack because black has actually the pawn majority on the queen side black would probably attack the queen side but it's a little bit too slow i think here the engine simply likes also white's position i think this natural setup of white is perfectly fine here we can even kick away with h3 bishop to f3 then d5 rook to b1 our opportunity so we can also attack uh, also the queen side with the rook queen to c2 rook to c1 are also opportunities to occupy the open c file so as i said many possibilities uh, again i'm pointing out also this is playable for black nothing is wrong if black plays this position but i simply like of course more uh white position because especially of this pawn central control with these two centralized pawns which are of course controlling these four important squares on this other side of the board so that's why uh here after move calcing bc uh, pardon me 
sorry uh, so after move uh, b6 uh, we have now rook to b1 this move is very important because of a pot after potential bishop to b7 there is maybe this tactical idea with d takes c5 and then the bishop could be in danger but that's actually what uh, the fanchefs did in a potential position in a different position this move wouldn't be possible because of the static d takes c5 but at least now with this idea uh, with the move bishop to b7 uh, black is also counter-attacking here uh, at the pawn on e4 so here from this point on the game becomes really really well because you have to now make a decision every other move i think would be passive i like simply now lila c0 choice lila c0 played a very sharp line played the move d5 sacrificing the pawn on c3 and there is also a cool game in the database between um, hikaru nakamura against magnus carlson from 2009 in which hikaru nakamura destroyed magnus carlson also by playing this gambit line by sacrificing the pawn on c3 here the fence has also uh, played this idea bishop takes c3 took the pawn but the problem about this pawn about this poison pawn sort of it's not really a poison pawn but it is sort of a pawn that uh, creates new opportunities new attacking opportunities for white because first of all what we can notice is that the bishop is a little bit loose on the board so the bishop can always be kicked away with queen to d3 queen to b3 so again black will lose another tempo but because black simply took the pawn so in a potential uh, continuation of course black needs to lose another tempo in order to secure the bishop maybe to f6 or maybe here to g7 so it's as i said a great compensation it's a tempo compensation here for white white lost the pawn but gets extra time to develop uh, also his attack so here after move bishop to c3 lila c0 launches the flank attack immediately so that's the beauty of this line sacrificing the pawn uh, getting the bishop out of the fence of the king the knight is also a little bit far away from the action the knight is also a little bit uh, far away from the potential defense here on f6 because what you want to do is of course get your knight on f6 but when you do that then of course you have blocked out your dark square bishop that's the main issue then you cannot of course get your bishop on a natural square on g7 so that's the beauty of this attack i think it's a playable line so if you have trouble maybe sometimes to beat the grunfeld this is a perfect perfect setup uh here by lila c0 i like simply this choice of lila c0 to play this game like this so after move h4 here queen to d6 uh lila c0 um, well, uh, Lila Zero's opponent's defense just try to block out maybe even a potential e5 pawn breakthrough. There is maybe an idea to play h5, but you see now how dangerous this attack can be when you weaken even further the pawn structure like this with the move h5, then bishop to c4. The problem is now in order to make something that happen black needs to play a queenside attack with a6 b5 but a6 for instance is not a possibility because you get this one queen to b3 comes with a double attack against the bishop and also against this pawn so again i'm pointing out black needs to make another move with the bishop which is one tempo again another tempo with a6 even if you play b5 still b, b takes uh, b takes c4 is not an opportunity because you lose also the bishop so i think in this particular scenario black needs to play at, le at least five six tempi in order to make something uh, to happen on the queen side meanwhile white is doing something meanwhile white can play of course knight to g5 d6 and then attack the f7 queen to f3 are opportunities bishop to h6 uh, knight to g5 as i said it's a very very dangerous move that uh, that white can play so as i said black needs too much time in order to make some kind of an attack on the queen side as i said five six tempi meanwhile white is much much faster on the attack on the king side so that's why here after we move h4 um h5 wasn't played by this other engine defense so defense has tried to move queen to d6 in order to block the potential progress uh with the move e5 so we have here h5 immediately you don't want to take of course then your structure is too much weakened here there are simply too many weaknesses there are pawn weaknesses there are square weaknesses in front of the king so that's why it's not a good choice so after move h5 we have knight to d7 so now the fences is trying desperately to get some more pieces into the defense and here rook to b3 which is now a brilliant move and you know how when 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 these engines are playing this rook lists for instance when stockfish leo c0 and also alpha zero of course in the past when these top engines are uh, playing a rook lift then you know that something special was is going to happen because after move rook to b3 obviously we need just to clear our knight here 
here for, uh, somewhere else and then uh, to get the rook on h3 and then of course trying maybe even some kind of a queen and rook battery and deliver checkmate on h7 so this is the beauty of this game i think a flank attack and against the fianchetto but the, with kings uh castled on the same side so after move rook to b3 we have now bishop to f6 um here knight to d2 if you try here knight to e5 it's not so good you get challenged immediately with the move f4 so you cannot play a blockade that's that's the main issue black would love of course uh, to play the blockade idea simply cementing position cementing the position in the center if that happens and for instance if you could just imagine the position with the move with the knight on e5 and without uh white maybe possibility to kick away the knight then this defensive setup would be perfectly fine for black but uh, knight to e5 as i said simply not a possibility so here bishop to d4 uh, here the uh, defenses is blocking out now the f4 move the potential f4 move by uh, by white here we have h takes g6 h takes d6 and now rook to h3 now uh, again this idea knight to e5 is not working uh, maybe to block uh, this potential f4 move because then you get knight to b3 again you cannot play this block it i've always tried when i analyze the game to see how it is possible maybe for black to defend this position but knight to e5 again simply not working you don't want to lose of course your uh, dark school bishop because your dark school bishop is simply the best defensive piece so that's why here after knight to b3 uh, the bishop will be taken and then of course you have too many uh, dark world problems here in front of the king so the game is simply over here for black so rook to h3 we have bishop to g7 you see now the fan chess is uh, getting the piece back we have knight to c4 which comes now uh with an extra tempo against the queen so as i said you would love to play this move knight to e5 but it's simply not possible now the queen has to retreat and now finally f4 so here b5 and most of us again uh, would probably retreat with the knight but not lila c0 lila c0 played here a really brutal brilliant attack queen to e1 finally uh lila c0 got the goal builds a queen and rook battery on the h file so now there are simply too many tactical problems here for black so after move queen to e1 we have b takes c4 queen to h4 and now knight to f6 uh, because both of these pieces are controlling of course uh, here the h7 square and also the h8 square there are maybe different opportunities to play something like rook to c8 in order to create some breathing spaces for the king because now after queen to h7 of course king to f8 and now queen to h8 isn't a possibility but there is now a brilliant move in this particular scenario uh, we have to say this wasn't played in the game but uh, there is now a brilliant move that uh, white can play white can play now a very sick move bishop to b2 bishop to b2 sacrificing now the bishop if you take then we block out the bishop out and you can never really use now the bishop in order to defend your position so it simply gives game over even if you try some other possibilities here maybe rook to e8 uh, it's again not even better even f5 is here an opportunity white has simply too many attacking possibilities if you pass through in order to close the position we can simply take you can maybe bring the queen into the game but again it's not even better because we can play rook to g3 now with ideas to play bishop to h6 and simply the game is over king to f8 we can play bishop to f4 again queen to f6 but now queen to h7 and now the serious threat is rook to takes g7 followed with queen to h6 so it's simply too much pressure here around the square g7 so it's something to resign so really really wild stuff after move queen to h4 we have now this idea knight to f6 but now e5 uh, here rook to d8 and now finally we have e takes f6 bishop to f6 queen to h7 and now uh, f5 again uh, here lila c0 uses this moment in order to open the position and the only way to defend this is of course to pass through with the move uh, g5 if you try something else if you try g takes f5 then you get this one bishop to f4 you have to move the queen and then bishop to h6 leads to into your checkmate so this is really really wild um, as i said after move uh, here g5 actually it is possible to even take the um, pawn here because after bishop to g5 the bishop gets deflected from the square a check so here you get checkmated so that's why so far the fan chess cannot take the uh, bishop in the continuation of the game the fan chess right uh here queen to e5 and now rook to e3 brilliant uh attacking uh attacking style here by lula c0 because if you notice all of these pieces of whites are so glued together there 
playing very well combined they're simply stuck to each other every piece is uh, uh, attacking uh, creating new attacking opportunities by in every particular move so here after move rook to e3 again the queen has to move somewhere queen to d4 we have bishop to h6 a new check king to e8 the king escapes but now with rook to d1 you see again a new tempo lila c0 is attacking in every move uh here its opponent here we have bishop to d5 there is not even a good square to escape queen to uh, queen to b2 could be maybe here an opportunity to escape with the queen but then you get this one bishop to c4 the problem is now the threat is this one even d6 with a discovered attack uh here and also threaten uh, some attacking opportunities around the square f7 so you would be forced maybe to play the blockade with the rook to with rook to d6 but now rook to b3 this winning simply the game so as i said brilliant brilliant setup here by lila c0 so after move rook to d1 now we have bishop to d5 here uh bishop to f3 uh bishop uh, queen to d1 bishop to d1 now it's obviously a completely winning end game here for for white we have bishop to g7 rook to uh rook to h8 we have now bishop to a4 first to check we have bishop uh, king to c7 now very cool move here again by c0 deflecting the bishop because if you take now uh white of course can take out the rook so this is not a good continuation in the continuation we have rook to b6 finally now queen to h8 we have rook to h8 and now bishop to f6 in this scenario lila c0 has now an extra piece and of course a very active setup here with these two bishops and uh the evolution is plus four here it's obviously a winning uh, completely winning end game here for for lila c0 so here after move bishop to f6 we have rook to g8 rook to e2 of course protecting the g2 pawn a5 king to h2 and now bishop to c3 now when we have of course a clear advantage now it's time to slow down the pace of the game regroup a little bit find new uh, best squares on the board for the minor pieces very very uh, pragmatic idea here bishop to c3 perfectly fine so rook to g8 king to h3 simply g4 we have bishop to f3 but here rook to e3 the problem is now if you take of course uh, then you get king to h8 uh, h4 uh, and uh, uh you have to lose another piece because even if you try something like rook to g8 then you get rook to g3 and you simply lose another piece so this is not possible after move rook to e3 we have bishop to c6 bishop takes c6 king to c6 rook to e8 and now uh getting this rook very actively behind this pawns uh, we have king to e7 and now uh here lila c0 uses this moment plays active with the king king to f4 we have a4 and now again a cool move bishop to f6 after king to f6 we have now rook to uh, a6 deflecting the king uh, from the defense of the rook king to e7 king takes g5 we have rook takes a4 uh, uh, we have king to c6 now lila c0 takes another pawn king to d5 and now of course rook to c5 and in this position the defense has resigned so brilliant brilliant game i really like this approach uh, first of all sacrificing the pawn let's go back uh, and this idea to sacrifice the pawn in the early stage of the game in the greenfield i think it's something worth to study uh here in the continuation this was i think a brilliant idea bishop takes c3 and now with this beautiful opportunity to create this flank attack we have seen h5 is uh causing many many tactical problems here also for black uh, the problem i think in this variation is that the knight is simply too far away from the action and even as i said in the beginning of the video even if you manage to bring your knight on f6 then you're locking also your bishop a little bit out of the game so that's why you simply lose too many tempi by taking out the pawn on c3 so please also watch the database check out the game maybe just for fun just watch it uh, between magnus carlson i see it here also in the database but uh, also hikaru nakamura with the white pieces against magnus carlson with the black pieces also in this uh, exactly same position uh, hikaru nakamura will really destroy magnus with brilliant brilliant tactics it's i think also something worth to see maybe in the near future i'll cover that game also on my youtube chess channel so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot lila c0 is in top shape i cannot wait to see lila c0 perform against the uh, stockfish in the super final i hope that will happen if you want to see more attacking brilliances like this uh, check out my comment to chess games by computer series with some more games by lila c0 stockfish and many many more and if you want to see human best chess games check out my best chess games of all time series with some great games from the past and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course